Hey guys, this is you. Welcome to the channel. Today we are looking at some of the basic functions on the MG4 electric vehicle. In this video, I will cover the gear selector, parking brake, auto hold, drive mode selection, and your regeneration braking selection. As always, you can find all the timestamps down below for you to skip forward if you wish to. If you found this video helpful, please don't forget to subscribe and like to support the channel. Alright, first thing, you can find the gear selector and parking brake on the center console. It's pretty simple to engage the gear selector. You do need to make sure the vehicle is on ready mode. That means the motor is switched on. If it doesn't sh not show ready over here, that means your motor is not fully switched on. You go into gears, it's only going to fall into neutral. It's not going to reverse or drive. Next, to engage gears, you have to make sure you put your foot on the brake. Press the brake, then twist all the way, that's going to be reverse. Somewhere in between, that's neutral, all the way to the right, that's drive. You do not have to stay on neutral at all, all you need to do is just click all the way for reverse, click all the way for drive, so it's not going to stop at neutral, so to speak. Otherwise, small click, go into neutral. Then press it down for park, just like that. You hear a noise about the releasing the handbrake or engaging the handbrake as well. That means you do not have to individually do anything with the handbrake or parking brake. But if you wish to, you still can do. First way to disengage the handbrake while you're not moving into gears, you need to do just press this while your foot is on the brake. If you do not put your foot on the brake, it's not going to be disengaged. Now the vehicle stay on neutral, that means the vehicle will roll forward and backwards if you do not tap your foot on the brake, depends on your situation. Now if you want to go back into park, either push it down or go up over here. Once you put on your handbrake or your parking brake, this will automatically go into park. But in most cases, I, my preference, I do not touch this button at all. As soon as you go into drive or neutral or reverse, this automatically gets released. Press to park, this will go automatically comes on just like that. You do have an indication on your dashboard with the P button over there. That means the parking brake is on. If you no light or no P uh, light on the top, that means parking brake is off. Additionally, you do have the gear select indicator on your P or reverse or neutral or drive, just like that. And you do have a switch underneath show your gear selector and here is a small piece of useful information or useless information depends on how you value it could be either way when your vehicle is in ready mode when you put the vehicle in drive and then the vehicle will forwards just like this if you're actually opening the driver door this will happen in two ways one way if i don't have my seatbelt on right now i open the driver door it'll shut off the motor it'll put the vehicle in park it'll give you a small warning telling you that this time you didn't didn't do everything well this will happen and i release the brake just like that the vehicle give me a shutter stop going to put on the parking brake going to engage me into park and at the same time the ready sign is released so the motor is switched off so just in case in emergency situation you didn't realize you were on drive and you were trying to get out the door this will happen the vehicle will roll forward just by very very small tiny distance because your there is a little bit reaction when you open the drive door the vehicle is still rolling stuff like that but it's not going to crash into something or run over someone so to speak so very good safety feature but depends on how you value it hope you don't need it the next scenario will be a little bit different so let's assume you are still driving the vehicle your seatbelt still on so let's look like this my seatbelt is on on the driver's side so this only applies to the driver by the way and then i'll put the vehicle in drive so it's ready to go don't worry about the handbrake or anything like that so the vehicle is in drive mode it's rolling in motion i'll open the driver door the vehicle will not shut off the vehicle will stay on drive it's still gonna go forward so i assume uh, some situation like this you may want to open the door check your you know parking lines on the side and stuff like that uh, or whatever scenario you are going to use the vehicle is still going to roll forward so just be careful before you open the driver door you also want to check if your gears on park if your seatbelt's on your parking brake is on stuff like that so i'll do this for you open the driver door and then you can see it's still going to roll 
just like that. So certainly not recommended to drive it like this, but it's just a small piece of information for you in case you meet in that scenario. Next part will be the auto hold function. To engage and disengage the auto hold function, you need to go to the setting part or go to the secondary screen, go to your vehicle over here. So either way, go to the vehicle and go to the safety on the top right, then engage and disengage the auto hold function first. Alternatively, on the Essence Spec Only, that's in New Zealand, Australia, you can do a drop down menu and click auto hold or disengage auto hold whenever you like. This is not available on the Excite Spec. Apart from switching on the auto hold, you need to also have your seatbelt fastened on your driver's side before you can engage the auto hold. I do not have my seatbelt on right now. I'll go into drive from here. Then the vehicle no, has no auto hold function or sign in between the ready sign and the percentage. That means I will roll forward, brake, no matter how much I press the brake, it's not going to engage auto hold. Now I have my seatbelt on. I'll do this again. So light press going to drive you can see the auto hold is ready to engage now with a sign so this sign will show between green color and white color white color means auto hold is engaged it's ready to go but it's not engaged as we are not coming to a complete stop just yet so to engage the auto hold you just roll forward then come to a complete stop then you can still tap your foot on the brake do not release it then press again so you have to depress it to be able to engage the auto hold function. Then it will show the green color over here. That means auto hold is now engaged. While the auto hold is engaged, your vehicle is still on drive. So it's still ready to go, but the vehicle will not roll forward or backwards until you press the pedal. So you can just tap, touch the pedal. You can see that release the auto hold again. Another way, when your auto hold come to complete stop, just like that, you can also Press the brake again to release the auto hold. If you just wish to let the vehicle roll in drive instead of just staying. For example, I'm going to press the brake again right now. Just like that, the auto hold is disengaged. So that's two ways to disengage the auto hold. Another small thing, if you put the vehicle on reverse, even if your auto hold is engaged, it's not going to use the auto hold to to hold your brake when you go into reverse by the way so it's the auto hold can only be used when you roll forward at least for the current software update one scenario you may have happened on your vehicle is if your vehicle is on auto hold right now and you, you didn't realize it was on auto hold you accidentally open the driver door this will happen your vehicle will engage its handbrake instead as it's simply not safe to let the vehicle roll forward and stuff like that. Same thing when you holding the auto hold, I'm gonna go into drive again. I'll release this out. So go back to the auto hold, I'll release my seatbelt. As in the auto hold theory, if you release your seatbelt, auto hold will not be engaged at all, but I can release that. You hear noise, that means the vehicle now holding the handbrake instead of the auto hold function. So it's still fairly safe if the vehicle staying stationary, but your gear is still on drive because no one forced it back into park. This also means you're actually stuck here. So if you press the pedal, the car will not roll forward because you haven't fastened your seatbelt. The handbrake is technically still on. What you want to do in this situation, press the brake while you're holding the brake, release the handbrake and then the car is good to go. So yeah, that's just the way how the vehicle try to keep you in the safe place before you crash into something, whether it's on auto hold or parking brake. Next, I'll talk about the drive mode and the energy recovery on the MG4 electric vehicle. To go into the setting, just click the car setting or swap the screen to the second level, go to your vehicle setting. Under the vehicle setting, you can find the driving and you can change your drive mode, energy recovery, one bottle driving and energy saving mode. I'll explain how this function works and what all these functions mean overall. In the future, I will also do a demonstration video how everything works in real driving. It's not going to be next week or so, it's going to be a few weeks behind. Anyway, to change whatever you like, first thing you can change your drive mode. The drive mode will be default at normal. Same as the energy recovery, it's going to be default at high and your one pedal driving mode. It's going to be default at off, energy saving mode, default at off. 
based on the current version of the MG4 electric vehicle. I did not design this function. I did not design this function to be not memorizing your, your function, whatever. Um, so yeah, this is just a tutorial on how to use, explain all those functions. Please, please don't comment down below says you absolutely hate this stuff because they don't memorize your stuff. This video is not all about that. Anyway, the first one, drive mode. Drive mode, you can change to between snow, eco, normal, sport, and custom. Whenever you change anything, your dashboard will also show you information at the middle center. Click snow, that means the vehicle gives you a very good traction on different driving conditions, especially in snow, for example. It's going to do the lowest recovery. You can still use one pedal driving on snow, by the way, so it's going to give you a better traction control and things like that. Because this particular vehicle is still rear-wheel drive on most versions that's sold in New Zealand, Australia, so it's not going to do real off-road, so to speak, but it will help in case there are snowy conditions. Next, I'll explain the Eco. So the Eco is going to be combined with normal and sport. Eco, it's going to be having a limited throttle response. That means when you put the pedal down, it's going to, not going to give you the max of power of the, the pedal. Let's assume you're putting 50% of the pressure on the pedal and the Eco, it's only going to give you around, let's say, 30%. Where if you go to normal, put the 50% down on the pressure, it's going to give you 50%. Where if you're in sport, it's going to give you a 70%. Let's put that way. That means when well, your pedal response and all that things is going to be quite different between eco, normal, and sport. Eco will be good if you wish to save some energy uh, through the driving, so it's going to be limited your throttle response and all that. Um, another thing under eco, your steering will feel a little bit lighter as well, so it's a little bit easier to drive and stuff like that. And the normal, your steering will be balanced, and the sport, your steering will be a little bit sharp. So that means it's going to be a little bit stiff. Um, but it helps with the cornering stuff, stuff like that. So that's what it changes between eco, normal, and sport. Last one is custom. Whenever you change anything on the customer, it will memorize your settings. So that means when you go back to customer again next time, it's gonna save your favorites or whatever you set for custom before. Customer is very helpful in case you wish to have the horsepower at each of the settings, steering at each of the settings, and pedal each of the settings. Let's assume I like the horsepower to be sporty, so I like the sporty driving, but I don't want the steering to be stiff or hard. I want the steering to be comfort or light. I can do that. And the pedal force, I can do normal, so the brake pedal, brake performance will be standard. That means whenever I like, I can change to customer and change and have these things memorized. Instead, if you go to eco, everything will be eco, comfort, normal, everything will be normal, sport, everything will be sport. So that's the good thing about customer. Next is the energy recovery. Whenever you change anything on energy recovery through low, medium, or high, or adaptive, you will, and even your one pedal driving, you will have the indication on the right bottom of the screen that will change between 1 to 2 to 3 to A, which means adaptive, or S means one pedal driving. So this is up to you whether you like it or not. You will be able to tell on the dashboard what you, the, the energy recovery mode you'll be staying on right now. Whenever you start the vehicle up, it's always going to be high and one pedal driving is off, by the way. So what energy recovery means is when you start driving the vehicle, when you put the pressure on the driving pedal, your accelerator, the car will just roll forward as normal. But as soon as you lift your foot off the throttle, that means you release the pedal, the car will generate some power back to the battery by slowing the vehicle down automatically without you tapping the brake just yet. And then you can change the level of the energy recovery. That means the slowing motion will be heavier, will be medium, will be lower, or even adaptive, whichever you like. The energy recovery brake motion doesn't really use your brake pads or brake mechanical brakes to slow the vehicle down. Instead, it's using the vehicle computing system to slow it down. So that you generate some power back to the battery. On the one pedal driving instead, it's gonna use it's gonna get a little bit help on the brake pads, by the way. So if you change the energy recovery to low, you're driving 50 k's per hour on the road, and you lift your foot off the throttle, the car will slow, slowly slow it down. So it's not gonna be dramatic. It's gonna be quite close to a petrol or or diesel vehicle, whichever you like. So that means it's gonna have around minus, let's say around minus two two to minus five percent of the power 
back into the battery, something like that, you will have that display on your dashboard on the right bottom, showing the 0% or higher percent or minus whatever percent. If the dashboard showing plus on the percentage, it means um, it's going, it's sending the power to the wheel. If it's showing minus percentage, it means it's generating power back to the battery while slowing down the vehicle. Next, if you do medium, so the slowing down will be around, let's assume 5% to 10%, something around that, even sometimes a little bit higher than 10%. And if you go to high, slowing down motion can be somewhere around 10 to even up to 20 something percent. So that's the difference between and the energy recovery level. You will notice that when you start driving the vehicle, when you slow down. Only thing is, under the energy recovery mode, and any mode, all the way from low to adaptive, you will not come to a complete stop. These only slow you down to about 10 kilometers per hour on the speed in New Zealand version. That means if you do wish to come to a complete stop and enter the energy recovery mode, you still need to use your brake pedal. Alternatively, whenever you brake, your brake pedal will also control the energy recovery as well. So that means, let's assume you're driving 100 k's per hour on the road, you suddenly wish to brake. When you apply the brake, as long as there's enough motion of the braking, it's going to go minus on the percentage as well. So it's going to send some power back to the battery while you are using the brake pedal. The cool thing about the MG4 EV is your brake pedal does not actually control the brake pads directly. It's more like a electronic switch. That switch will switch between the regeneration braking and also your brake pads, depends on the situation, all that things. If it is not enough for the regeneration braking to slow you down, it's gonna start the regeneration braking, then eventually kicking the brake pads. So in some way, your brake pads should last a little bit longer than some other you know, petrol or diesel vehicles, so to speak. The last one is called adaptive. In under adaptive, the vehicle will give you different energy recovery based on your driving conditions. Let's assume you're going deep downhill, you may it may automatically switch on the high regeneration, and that means it's gonna give you more brake and more regeneration. But if you're going uphill, and then it may give you a very low or medium energy recovery. So that means you're still getting a little bit more motion going uphill, but it's not going to slow you down quite dramatically because you still want to climb up eventually. Some additional information regarding the energy recovery when you drive the vehicle on adaptive cruise control, which is available on the MG4 EV across all the vehicles. Um, you, when the adaptive cruise control slows the vehicle down based on the front traffic, it will use the energy recovery as well. Uh, doesn't matter which level you're on, depends on the brake force the vehicle is generating from the adaptive cruise control. The percentage power is going to go minus, that means your actual regeneration on your uh, adaptive cruise control, which is very, very cool. And also, even if you switch the vehicle to high energy recovery, and but your vehicle is nearly fully charged or fully charged, let's assume it's around 100% or 95, 98% on the battery, your energy recovery will be quite minimum. The thing is, you're really close to a full charge, so your charging power from the regenerate braking is going to be very minimum, so you don't get much energy recovery out of it. So you will notice, let's say in the early morning, you fully charged the vehicle already last night. When you start driving the vehicle, when you release the pedal, it's not going to give you the highest regeneration because the battery is nearly fully charged or fully charged in another way. So that's just a small thing about the energy recovery. Next feature is the one pedal driving. So this is the function that a lot of people who drove, let's say a Tesla, will get used to this really, really quick. But if you are driving these MG4 EV for the first time, you can try this, but it took me quite some time to get used to everything. So do, do take some time to get used to all the features. Um, don't rush it. If you don't like it, try another time sort of thing. Anyway, to engage the one pedal driving, it's pretty simple. Just tap this button to switch, to switch it on. Small thing, if your battery is over 90% of the charge, you will not be able to switch the one pedal driving on. That means um, if you tap this, it's going to pop up notification says low charge rate, something like that. Battery one pedal driving is not available. Does not necessarily mean your, your vehicle is 40, stuff like that. It just means your battery is higher than whatever the percentage allows the one pedal driving. Anyway, what one pedal driving means is if you engage the one pedal driving and uh, you pretty much only need to use your driving pedal, which is your accelerator. So when you press the accelerator, the car will just roll forward. 
when you slightly release your accelerator, the car will start slowing down. If you completely release your accelerator, the car will come to a complete stop. And when it comes to a complete stop, it will also hold your brake as well. So that's quite handy in stop start traffic. And also for someone who likes it, you don't need to brake all the time. So you can just use one pedal, which is your driving pedal to control the, the going forward or brake motion, stuff like that. Some information about your one pedal driving. If you switch the one pedal driving mode on, you can still use your brake pedal, by the way. You're still controlling the vehicle, don't worry. Um, you can still brake, it will just perform as normal. So you don't need to panic. You, you, are still, you can still control the vehicle with the driving pedal and brake pedal. So no problem controlling the vehicle and the vehicle will listen to you even if you're under one pedal driving mode. Another information someone pointed out on the one pedal driving mode, unlike some other vehicles, MG did not design the one pedal driving mode when you put the vehicle on reverse. So if you engage one pedal driving going forward, it will come to a complete stop. But if you're going backwards, you still need to use your brake to come to a complete stop. Just a small thing about the one pedal driving mode. I believe that's, that's the same uh, applying to the energy recovery as well. When you reverse, it's not going to apply the regeneration for you. So only going forward will apply the regeneration. And the last feature is called energy saving mode. If you switch the energy saving mode on, your energy recovery will be on the highest. You cannot change that anymore until you get out of the energy saving mode. So it's going to give you a so the best regeneration on your um, brake force. Um, so that helps with the efficiency. You, let's just say something like if you drop the battery level to quite low, you want to switch this on, so to speak. Last part, I'll just quickly go through the convenience again. Under the driving, under the vehicle, under the convenience, you can tune your left start button and right start button on the steering to change to the drive mode, energy recovery, or whatever you like. So uh, along with that, you can also get two more features or one more feature, depending on the spec level you're looking for. Anyway, if you change to drive mode, all you need to do is just press the button on your steering. So it's gonna change and shuffle between the drive mode or energy recovery. Uh, again, it does not shuffle through the one pedal driving. So if you engage, want to engage the one pedal driving, you have to go to the screen to, to use that. Just a small detail if you want like an alternative way to change your drive mode, or this is the best way to change your drive modes. Uh, I've explained all these things in the steering function part. If you wish to check that, just go to that video for future reference. All right, thanks for watching. That's the end of this video. If you find this video helpful, please subscribe and like. That would be really helpful for the channel. For all the other MG4 tutorial videos, you can find the playlist down below. I will see you in the next video.